कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी In the news tonight, Attorney General hits out at Fiji Law Society. Prime Minister commends Electoral Commission. And 300 dengue fever cases recorded. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nunn. Bulawinaka Fiji, Attorney General Aya Sayed Kayum has hit out at the Fiji Law Society, saying it disrespected the office of the Speaker of Parliament. The Society yesterday issued an open letter calling on the Attorney General and Parliament to defer debate on two bills before the House. Apani Sawangai Randovu reports the Anti-Corruption Division Bill and the Abolition of Assessors Bill are due for debate this week. They have done a great injustice. Sayed Kayum says the motion on the two bills was put forward with no objections from either side of the House. It's the motion that was put on the floor. It got passed without any objection. The Law Society has got it wrong in the first place. And to say it would be a serious failure of leadership, how dare they do that? The Attorney General has also questioned the independence of the Fiji Law Society, saying it has attacked the Speaker and questioned his leadership. It would appear to me that they are playing politics. Because this is precisely the agenda that Sodelpa and NFP were trying to highlight indirectly or indirectly, questioning the leadership of the, uh, of the Honorable Speaker. And here we have the Law Society doing the same thing again and getting the law wrong. Speaking on the abolition of Assessor's Bill, Syed Kayum says there is a lack of consistency and judges are relying on Assessor's to determine their verdict. The whole point is to get a consistency in the law. So you develop proper jurisprudence. And also it will ensure that the judges will actually develop a system within themselves. They'll be able to have consistency too. In relation to the anti-corruption division bill, Sayed Kayum questions how the law society can say that corruption is not too complex. He says there are inconsistencies in dealing with corruption cases in Fiji and the bill will address that. Apinisong Rindovu, FBC News. And Apunisa joins us live now. Apunisa, can you tell us more about the two bills? Edwin, the Attorney General, in talking about the abolition of Assessors' Bill, says this will ensure that verdicts by judges are consistent. He says that in, past, in, in the past, verdicts by assessors have one way or another impacted the final decision made by judges. He also says that uh, there is no need for public, uh, public consultation, rather, given that uh, in the past, incidents where offences are similar but verdicts by assessors uh, differs. He says this goes to show there is no consistency. On the anti-corruption division bill, the Attorney General says corruption is a big issue for Fiji and records can show this. He adds such activities are hindrance to economic growth. He also says that both bills are due for debate either tomorrow or Friday. Edwin. Naka Penisa. Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama says the House needs to acknowledge the work of the Fijian Electoral Commission while debating the Commission's 2014 annual report. Mbani Marama says the Commission, through the Fijian Elections Office, conducts a significant role. Pritika Pratap reports. The Prime Minister says the Electoral Commission regularly checks the register of voters and Fijian population to determine representation in Parliament. Ensuring that our Fijian citizens are served proportionately, equally, and uh, equitably. Unlike the past, Mr. Speaker, our parliament always had a fixed number of seats. Claims by the opposition that the recommendations made by the Electoral Commission and the multinational observer groups were ignored were rubbished by Tony General Ayase at Kayum. This government actually forging ahead uh, and blatantly ignoring what was recommended after the 2014 and 2018 elections. It only made cosmetic. 23 out of the 28 recommendations of MOG have already been implemented. The Electoral Commission has its own budget. It's hired its own legal counsel for representation. The Attorney General says other recommendations by observers and the opposition have in fact been considered. Why can't we have signs in the ballot paper? Signages, like in the past, the symbols. There is an amendment to the bills that we are talking about. Party symbols will appear as proposed in the bill 
on the voter instruction booklet after the law is approved by parliament. The Justice, Law and Human Rights Committee will continue consultations on other 2018 general election reports next week. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Minister for Disaster Management, Inia Seruiratu, has apologized for the inconvenience caused by sudden changes to curfew two weeks ago. Ahead of Tropical Cyclone Ana, the NDMO announced revised curfew hours on the 29th of last month that would last the entire weekend, only to cancel them hours later. Seruiratu says the NDMO and stakeholders have a process and take full responsibility for that decision, which was made according to the weather at the time. Forecasts can be very accurate, but forecasts also can uh, be different from uh, real uh, life uh, uh, scenarios. So the, the, the decision on the curfew that was taken, Mr. Speaker, sir, was based on the initial assessment that it will make landfall on Vitilio. And Lena Rees joins us now for more on this story. Lena, opposition MPs also question the need for the current curfew from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. The Minister for Disaster Management, Inia Seriratu, says there is a provision in the Constitution relating to not only national security but to health as well, adding that the curfew that is currently in place has been there from day one when we wanted to have a COVID-free Fiji. Seriratu goes on to say that a lot of people, including some members of the opposition, appreciate the fact that Fiji is currently COVID-free. Now, he says that... The authorities are in no rush to change what is currently in place because life is more important than anything else, stressing that the right to life is more important than the economy, Edwin. And thank you for that, uh, Lena. Around 300 cases of dengue fever have been recorded following the two recent tropical cyclones. The Ministry of Health is expected to release updated figures this Friday as laboratories are still testing samples from the divisions. Health Minister Dr. Ifiri Miwangai Nambete confirms there have been three deaths due to leptospirosis and there are more cases of the bacterial disease. Dr. Wangai Nambete says the gene expert testing kits have been of great help in accurately, accurately and efficiently detecting these diseases. Because we have the ability to test those that, uh, that may have the syndromes, they're actually being tested. So we're actually able to pick up a lot more. Up ahead, foreign investments dropped by 40%. And Fiji enters emission reduction program. By today, deliver a Radio Fiji Radio Fiji Rosu Radio Fiji 2 Desh Welcome back. More than 1,900 students and 207 teachers from tropical cyclone Yasa affected areas underwent counselling. Education Minister Rosie Akbar says students responded quickly to the sessions, but teachers are taking more time to get back on track. Sanya Nimboila reports. Students who live through TC Yasa have bounced back quicker thanks to psychosocial support session. Children were quick, very quick to respond to the counseling tactics while the, the teachers probably were still uh, down with the trauma of losing their homes, their quarters and, and, and the rest of the stuff. So the, the program was conducted in 22 northern schools which included 16 primary schools, 5 secondary schools and 1 special school. Akbar also clarified misconceptions from the opposition, saying more than 20 teachers have graduated from the counselling course. Were conducting their counselling, were they fully trained then? Or no? Not because they graduated in, you said they graduated in January, just after the cyclone. Counselling is a very important, it requires qualified people, not just any Tom, Dick and Harry. It is a very interesting yes. All 35 teachers graduated with a diploma on 11th of January 2021. But Mr. Speaker said courses complete well before graduation. And seven of these counsellors were from the North. The Education Ministry works with the Empower Pacific and the Medical Service Pacific to provide counselling program to school heads. Counselling sessions will continue to cover all schools in the affected areas. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News.
The rate of foreign investors establishing businesses in Fiji is forecast to drop by at least 40%. Investment Fiji Chief Executive Craig Strong says this is a direct consequence of the pandemic. Josiah Nanunga reports the downturn has driven them since mid-2020 to initiate strategies to engage with potential investors and exporters at the global level. New approaches implemented by Investment Fiji have attracted potential investors, indicating that investments will return to some state of normalcy soon. If you compare year on year, uh, 2019 versus the 2020, we're about 40% down on, on foreign direct uh, investment projects. So we're, we're, on, we're on par with, with the global trend at the moment. Strong says they plan to expand webinar sessions over the next few months so that exporters can connect with buyers around the world. We're looking at our, our key target markets, our key um, export markets, um, and, and focusing very much country-specific over the next six months and kicking off with, um, with New Zealand later this month um, and then going through to Australia, to the US, to Japan, and so forth. Investment Fiji has also noted a major drop in re-exports when compared to domestic exports. There was a lot of focus on uh, buying Fijian products uh, through e-expos and other things. But at the same time, we have a detailed marketing plan in terms of what we want to achieve as in, in, in different markets. Investment Fiji is banking on virtual trade seminars, touching on different sectors which has been successful over the past few months. The team will continue to pursue direct foreign investment opportunities. Chose Inanunga. FBC News. Land and resource owners in the three main islands will benefit from an emission reduction payment agreement between Fiji and the World Bank. Economy Minister Ayer Said Kayum says an area of 37,282 hectares spread over 20 districts have been identified for the program. Kelly Vadala reports. The five-year agreement will unlock around $25.4 million for reducing emissions and boosting climate resilience. These activities include the establishment of forests on degraded land, sustainable management of designated timber production forests, the total protection of intact existing natural forests, the incorporation of trees into farming and agricultural systems. Opposition MPs have raised concerns saying the agreement might overlook those involved. The downstream effect of this agreement is going to be felt by the very people that are involved. We have to ensure that those who are going to provide the resources uh, have the agreement which is uh, properly in place so that they are not dispossessed or they don't lose out. Minister Ayer Said Kayum says the initiative will benefit resource owners. It's important to note that the US $4.5 million that will be generated from this initiative will be passed down to resource owners as incentive payments. The initiative will also get legal backing via the upcoming climate change bill. Fiji is amongst 19 countries accepted for funding under the World Bank's carbon fund. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Government's efforts to revive the livestock sector are not matched by commitment from farmers. Minister for Defence Inya Seduerato says partnership and commitment are vital to increasing production and uplifting the meat industry. Kritika Kumar reports despite the use of new technology to boost production, farmers don't seem interested. Inya Seduerato, a former agriculture minister, says while the meat industry has potential, it's going nowhere unless farmers step up. It can be done can be done. We have the right quality, we have the right breed, we also have the environment, but the commitment, it's that commitment that is lacking. And that's unfortunate. Opposition MP Piyoti Konduandua, while debating the review of Fiji Meat Industry Board 2014 annual report, called on for the Nakasi Abatua to be relocated. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an area developing into, you know, um, a residential area. So I would like to ask the, the Honorable Minister Konsan. Um, yeah, but the stand is still there, Honorable Minister. Attorney General Ayal said Kayum agrees there is a desperate need to relocate the facility. The stands can be quite overwhelming. Uh, we need to be able to address that and we need to find you know, a sound a relocated site for that. And that's all the uh, challenges and issues that the board has to deal with and we'll work with them. 
According to the government, another issue affecting the meat production is whether young people will want to get into livestock farming and access to funding. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Legendary musician and songwriter Chese Mudunambitu was laid to rest today. The FMF National Gymnasium was full this morning with family and friends of the late singer paying their last respects. Eulogies were delivered at the funeral service attended by Prime Minister Boring and Baini Marama and his family Ratutu Akitao Dokana Uto, his brother Ratu Keni Vune Vui Yasawa and Ratu Epenisa Dakumbao. Udunambito was famous for his songs Fascinating Fiji, Loma Loma, Maita Vuni and Tropical Dawn. He is survived by his wife and seven children. And time now for tonight's Business with Whitney. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, agriculture census complete. And tourism industry pushes for COVID-safe certification. Stay with us. Kumar Sami Naika, Bongo Alugu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2, me Purana Jana Lage, Ame Bota Chalage. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dha. The Ministry of Agriculture has recorded the details of over 83,000 farmers in its 2020 census. Minister for Agriculture Dr. Mahendra Reddy says the census also captured 70,991 households with some having multiple farms. Dr. Reddy adds that the detailed report of the 2020 agriculture census will be tabled in Parliament in March. The agriculture census general table, so it will give you the general descriptive of the uh, entire um, surveyed, uh, surveyed households, agriculture households. Uh, then you have got the 2020 agriculture census enumeration boundary report. Then you will have the 2020 agriculture census gender analysis. And you will have the 2020 agriculture census administration report. Sanifa joins us now with the latest from the money market. Good evening. Let's look at the latest from the money world. China's producer price index rose 0.3% year-on-year in January, ending an 11-month deflationary trend and pointing to a recovery for the world's second largest economy. Their consumer price index contracted to 0.3% following December's 0.2% growth. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar traded near a two-week low as demand for safer assets receded today. Elsewhere, market risk remained mildly positive as traders await the U.S. stimulus while debate continues in the Congress. Also important are the latest positive developments in COVID vaccine research and chatter surrounding trade tier among the Western countries. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Here today's exchange rates are set early this morning. The Fiji dollar rose against one of our major trading partners, the Kiwi dollar, as well as the Chinese yuan, US greenback, and the PNG Kina. However, it slipped against the Aussie dollar, Euro, and the Japanese yen. The commodities market didn't do so well today. Oil dropped closing at $58 per barrel. Gold fell to $1,842 per ounce. And silver closed down at $22.40 an ounce. Tourism businesses certified under the Care Fiji commitment say certification by Touris Tourism Fiji gives assurance to guests. The program is designed to reassure travelers that Fiji is a safe destination for their next holiday. Felipe Nakasa reports the Care Fiji commitment has also been recognized internationally. This plaque allows travelers to recognize operators that have adopted health and hygiene protocols aligned with the World Travel Tourism Council's Global Safe Travel Protocols. Uh, I think guests will be looking for a safe, a hygienically cleaned property. Uh, so I think to get this plaque gives the guest an assurance and the confidence to travel. Tano Hotel was also one of the first to undergo the care commitment program training. Operators must nominate a wellness ambassador undertake extensive training on COVID-19 safe best practices and develop a comprehensive action plan to ensure safe guidelines. It's been a great initiative from the uh, National Tourism Office putting together the Care Fiji commitment, which for us is just an assurance that Fiji is ready. 
Those in the tourism industry that have been certified are ensuring the standard is maintained throughout. We start, for example, with the guest journey starts with the portal taking temperature and giving the sanitizing hand. The guest gets asked if he has downloaded the Carefici app. We're having on the floors the uh, social distancing stickers. So far, 162 tourism businesses have applied for the Care Fiji Commitment Program, but only 86 have been approved and certified by Tourism Fiji. Philippa Naikaso, FBC News. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you and good evening. Coming up, three sports can qualify for Olympics without overseas travel. And young Fiji Warriors lock up Penn's four-year French deal. This and more after the break. Radio Fiji 2 me. There's good news for local athletes as three sports can now qualify for the Olympic Games locally. Swimming, athletics and archery have been given the green light to use their national meets as qualifying events. Venina Rakautonga with the details. Due to COVID-19 related restrictions, most athletes are not able to travel to qualifying tournaments. As we all well know, under the conditions that we have, it's been very difficult for a lot of the uh, national federations to get their competitions going, particularly those who were not able to get out of the country. Fiji Swimming has kick-started its national events in a bid to secure a spot. President Ben Rova says eight swimmers are in contention for the Olympic spot. So leading up to the qualifying event, which is the Open uh, in April, they have about seven competitions to allow them to make that time. At the moment, no one has made the A or B qualifying time yet. So what they're doing now is they're trying to swim uh, and lower their time because then we'll convert those times into thinner points. Huh? Fiji Archery President George Fong says the national series, which consists of six rounds, is their qualifying event. Well, this is our first tournament of the year, so based on the results of this, we'll know where we stand in relation to uh, what we need to reach. Once all athletes are confirmed, Team Fiji will travel to Japan on the 10th of July where they will return once their individual competitions end. Fiji will be represented in seven sports. Venina Rakautonga, FPC Sports. Lanky Lock forward Janeiro Wakeham has smashed through many obstacles in his life. Raised by a single mom, Wakeham used this as motivation to work hard and always stay one step ahead of the game. Those same attributes have earned him a four-year deal at Stade Francais in Paris. Carlaini Tavi has more. Known for his height and fearless character on the field, General Wickham was on a mission to build a better life for him and his mother. Being my mom, that she wakes up, goes to work, single mom, staying with her. Since when I was in Form 4, every time I look at her going to work, sometimes she wakes up, she's only... Saving us at home, and that's where it comes. I have to keep working hard for us to get something and repay it back to her. The 18-year-old recently signed for State Francais Paris Club. For mom Makitelena Nasikata, seeing her son come this far in life is worth all the challenges. I saw him growing up with his uh, rugby career, so I support him all the way. He was a very good boy in school. And singing... Going this far. Hoping to be the next Leone Nakarawa, Wakeham has a long-term plan to don the white jumper. Next World Cup, my next target is Fiji, playing Fiji and Jess. The Suva Grammar School student is one of the youngest players to be named in the Fiji Warriors squad. First was Kini Murimurivalu, then Alivereti Loloa. Wakeham will join fellow Fijian Waisiana at the level at Shade Francais. Karle Nitavi, FBC Sports. Flying Fijian centre Semiran Ranra is raising awareness and funds for the thousands of Fijians affected by Cyclone Yasa and Cyclone Ana. Ranranra is supporting Think Pacific Foundation's charitable efforts in rural Fijian communities through their fundraising program. 
The largest donation will receive a flying Fijians jersey signed by Ranranra from the 2020 Autumn Internationals. All other individuals who donate will be included in a raffle to win a signed ball and a Bears jersey signed by Ranranra. Another prize is a signed pair of boots worn by Ranranra in the premiership win of the bar. The KVT Silktails Rugby League team left this morning for Australia with unfinished business in the New South Wales Iran Massey Cup. After a short-lived debut in 2020, the Silktails are definitely on a mission to stamp their mark on the competition. Felipe Nicasso has more. The real test now will be when the team touches down in Sydney and spends the next few months at their base. Uh, we've, there's been a lot of work around that, sort of just filling him in and letting him know what it's going to be like over there. Um, they know what they're, they're in for, you know, it's, uh, seven months is a long time to be away for, uh, from your families, but, you know, there's a, everyone, there's a, there's a goal there to, you know, uh, for everyone to, uh, to, to achieve over there, something as a team. It's going to be a busy schedule for the team, with plans also being mapped out. But the focus remains, and that is to pick up from where they left off last season. We'll still be training in their quarantine uh, rooms and that, so hopefully we don't lose too much. Also relishing his chances is former Naita City fullback Vuate Karaolevu, the former Morris Brothers high school student who just started playing rugby league a couple of weeks ago, is out to impress the coach. There's always a competition in the team, uh, personnel-wise, but uh, if you want to be at the top uh, 13, you have to be the best. You have to train hard and you have to really be dominant in whatever you do during training. Families and relatives also gathered this morning to farewell the side. The Silk Tales will be based in Sydney for the entire 2021 season, playing their home fixtures at Mascot Oval. Philip and I, Caso, FBC Sports. Five new schools have joined the Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby League Vodafone Trophy Competition. These are Gospel High, Namosi Secondary, Balata College in Tavo, and two bar-based schools, DAV College and Ba Sangam. Tale Matarukula with the details. Gospel High School returns to the competition after a lapse of three years. A change in the leadership in school who would like to see a development in many other sports and one of it is this rugby league. The same that goes on with athletics. However, starting from scratch will be a challenge. It's something that uh, is to instill in the children to begin now. It's starting the development again, planning and even with coaching development of coaches and things. Entering the competition again may be challenging, but the players are excited for the opportunity. They are confident of a good outing and are ready to take on some rugby league giants. It's going to be hard. I know there are a lot of uh, good players uh, out there. Just need to work hard and depend on God and uh, focus. I know it's going to be hard. A lot of training and uh, my wish all the best for the competitors. The Fiji Secondary School Rugby League Vodafone Trophy competition will begin next Saturday in the Southeastern and Western Divisions. Tale Materkula, FBC Sports. Fiji football captain Roy Krishna continues his goal-scoring run in the Indian Super League. Krishna scored again this morning through a penalty to help his ATK Mohan Bagan side to a 2-0 win over Bengaluru FC. Marcelino Pereira doubled the lead just before halftime with a stunning free kick from the edge of the box. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Find out which iPhone is seeing the lowest sales. Details after the break. Radio Fiji 2 me. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan. A low pressure trough moving in from the north is expected to bring rain and thunderstorms to northern areas tomorrow and the rest of Fiji by the weekend. Looking at the west, they had a generally sunny f a day today. From Pacific Harbour to Suva, skies were generally clear with periods of sunshine. And in the north, a mixture of sun and rain. At sea northwest, winds at 15 to 20 knots and moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 8 minutes after midnight, followed by high tide at 6.23 a.m. Sunrise is at 5.57. The outlook for tomorrow is a chance of showers and thunderstorms. The outlook for Friday, more showers.
And in Fiji and Pulse, we ask, should schools in the central division start late due to traffic delays? them to start uh, school late, you know, around 9 o'clock. Uh, the reason, you know, most uh, people come from far places. So. Okay, for the children, they should just start normal time. Because if they going to start late, then they're going to finish late. And that might be a problem. I think uh, school should start at the same time, because of the students arriving early. Uh, but the students that are coming late due to traffic, they should not uh, be penalized or suspended or anything like that. Uh, school should start late uh, a little bit, because uh, it should be a little bit uh, lenient on the students yeah, because uh, it's not their fault uh, because of the traffic. And recapping our main stories, Attorney General heads out at Fiji Law Society, Prime Minister commends Electoral Commission and 300 dengue fever cases recorded. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question. This week we are asking, are the prolonged traffic delays justifiable in order to have better roads? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And to our shot of the day, this would qualify as a one in a million captured by Chochi Ruvadake at Dikumbia Point in Kandavu. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda. हमारे सामने नाइक है गोंगो अलीगुल लटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन